Good evening, everybody. It is glorious to return to this stage to celebrate GLAD and this community of wonderful people. And to be here with so many inspiring people committed to LGBTQ justice and to justice for people living with HIV. Thank you to everyone joining us in person and online. We're thrilled to be sharing this phenomenal evening with you. It's been a hard year for so many reasons. From the continuing horror of police brutality, to racial injustice, to attacks on our democratic institutions, to the challenges of the pandemic, the realities of our everyday lives have been overwhelming. We can't diminish the tremendous grief we've been feeling individually and collectively. But we, what we can do is fight. We fight alongside our grief, and our grief propels us to fight harder. We fight harder by turning towards each other, not away, and by staying connected and engaged. We fight harder when we lift each other up, when one of us or one of our communities falters, and when we take care of one another. We don't fight these battles alone, and we celebrate our victories together. That is how we persist. This is what gives me hope for our community and our future as a community of queer advocates and allies. And the work we do at GLAD gives us hope. A friend recently asked me, what keeps you going at GLAD? And I told them it's not just the work we do, but it's the how we do it. The pandemic prompted us to take another look at our organizational values. And I want to talk to you tonight about two of those values, justice and lived equality and collaboration. Let's start with justice and live equality. Of course, GLAD is active in high impact litigation. We led the challenge to the transgender military ban from day one, holding the ban at bay for nearly two years and paving the way for the Biden administration to repeal the ban this year. We are prepared to and do defend against any attempt to under, undermine the full promise of marriage equality in our victory in Obergefell or to render our families second class. We're co-leading, thanks to my colleague Jennifer Levi, a case to fight a truly awful new ban, new law in Tennessee that compels businesses to essentially post a not welcome sign for transgender people. We steered an amicus effort at the Massachusetts um, Supreme Judicial Court, leading to a groundbreaking ruling that LGBTQ people are protected from discrimination in jury service, and for the first time in Massachusetts, that sexual orientation is a protected class that merits heightened scrutiny. And as a legal team, we continue to fight for the full inclusion and safety of LGBTQ youth in schools. Most recently, we submitted an amicus brief in support of the inclusion of transgender girls in sports in the Second Circuit, and a brief defending the Massachusetts anti-bullying law from a constitutional challenge in the First Circuit. And of course, we keep a keen eye on the workings of the US Supreme Court to be prepared for any threat to our community's rights, thanks to our formal legal director, Gary Busick, who continues to advance GLAD's mission after 40 plus years of service. Thank you, Gary. And it's also my pleasure to tell you, for the first time, about a brand new effort just launched in Maine. My colleagues, Ben Klein, Chris Urchel, and Mary Bonato, just filed today with the state's Human Rights Commission on behalf of a transgender elder who was denied entry into an assisted living facility just because she's a transgender woman. This is the first ever such complaint filed in the United States. And we And we simply cannot tolerate our elders being denied the care they so need just because of who they are. 
So GLAD uses every tool at our disposal to live our values of justice and lived equality for LGBTQ people and people with HIV. This summer, GLAD advocated with New Hampshire policymakers to tear down barriers that keep non-binary people from accessing accurate identification. We've led, yeah, go New Hampshire. Um, we've led le legislative efforts for parentage equality in every New England state in the past five years. In those fights, we fought to ensure that core family laws don't discriminate on the basis of gender, sexual orientation, marital status, or how a child came into the world. And we've set our sights right here in Massachusetts, our last New England holdout, where we're continuing to fight for the Massachusetts Parentage Act, now pending on Beacon Hill. And in this past legislative session alone, GLAD worked with community and advocacy partners to win tremendous victories. In Maine, we strengthened protections for incarcerated transgender people, expanded the right to counsel and review for youth in the juvenile justice system, and increased access to the game-changing medication PrEP, which reduces the risk of HIV transmission to virtually zero. In Rhode Island, we expanded housing anti-discrimination protections and we ensured inclusive bathroom access. And in Maine, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire, we defeated discriminatory bills that targeted trans children. And in Maine, we defeated a bill to deny transgender women access to shelters. Our victories have sh helped shape a more inclusive New England, where LGBTQ people and people living with HIV are not only protected under the law, but where their families and their individuals are seen, respected, and valued. But we don't stop there. As a leader in the Freedom and Opportunity for All Coalition, GLAD is fighting to pass the Equality Act to secure comprehensive federal non-discrimination protections for LGBTQ people all across the country. Despite our progress, LGBTQ people, particularly people of color, still face sometimes devastating discrimination in their daily life. And anti-LGBTQ state legislative attacks are on the rise. We urgently need a federal non-discrimination law. And right now, we have real momentum and an incredibly oppor incredible opportunity to get it done this con congressional session if we all do our part. Justice and lived equality means identifying and mending gaps and protections. It means dismantling harmful systems. That's why GLAD is committed to ending the school and child welfare to prison pipelines, to redressing the brutality LGBTQ individuals face in confinement, and finding, confronting, and uprooting injustices in our community wherever they occur. It's work that takes decades. <laughs> it's work that gives us hope, and it's work that requires every single one of us. Which brings me to the second core value I want to share with you tonight, which is collaboration. How we do our work is as important as the work that we do, and I am incredibly proud of our how. We form deep, lasting relationships with intersecting movements, like the reproductive justice movement, anti-racism movements, and the disability rights movement. We partner with medical providers, educators, data scientists, so that our arguments are evidence-based and grounded in the latest research and best practice. And we listen and we learn and make sure that perspectives of people who are most impacted, those whose experiences and expertise are often ignored or erased, that drives our work. So that we as a movement are wiser, more connected, more powerful. Most recently, I had the privilege of witnessing the magic of our how in the coalition that GLAD co-founded with Yale Law School professor Doug Neejame to pass the Connecticut Parentage Act. 
The We Care Coalition brought together queer families, reproductive rights advocates, children's rights advocates, medical providers, lawyers, academics. At our regular meetings, parents like Stephanie and Denise, who showed up on their lunch breaks from work, grounded our work in their courage and vulnerability. In sharing the ways that their children, a toddler and a teenager, have struggled under outdated parentage laws, Stephanie and Denise opened the door for others to share and join us as well. Soon, families and advocates across the state formed a crescendo of voices that Connecticut legislators couldn't ignore. And this June, after a nearly unanimous vote in both chambers, the Connecticut Parentage Act became law. The fight for equality requires that we fight for all members of our community. That means working hand in hand with black and brown communities to address the particular harms facing queer people of color. In Maine, we're a key member of the youth-led youth justice movement to shut down Long Creek, that state's prison for children. In Massachusetts, GLAD co-founded an alliance for child welfare-involved LGBTQ youth and also a broader child welfare reform coalition. Through these partnerships, we're working to prevent and undo the damage our child welfare and juvenile justice systems cause black and brown youth and their families. Meaningful change has always been the work of community, and we sustain ourselves as advocates through the strength of our connections to each other. The work we do is hard. Yeah, yes. Um, the work that we do, that all of us do, it's hard and it's often really exhausting, um, but it's work that truly changes lives. And how we do that work is truly together. Each one of us, we can't do it alone. So I just wanna say thank you for the critical role that you have played in GLAD's success, past, present, and future. You give me hope and I'm so appreciative for your support.